Last time on Dice Funk. I'm, I'm, I will not go against you, and if you say not to do this, I will not do this, but I take offense at you making the comparison to me being an illithid and that I'm like the Kitsune. I do not like that insinuation. Uh, hello, sibling. I am, I am your big sister. As you're talking, uh, because the little slime abomination does not know personal boundaries, it's getting in your mouth and, te- and just exploring. Uh, uh, no, uh, that, that is n- no. Uh, oh no. Yeah. Uh, what do we? What do we got around that's got more limbs? More centaurs. Limbs. Mm-hmm. Centaurs. How many hands? If you want to maximize your limb potential, mm-hmm. the answer is the hecatonkeries from Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know what that is, but I. This seems, yeah. <laughs> I'm not asking you to snitch. <laughs> Come on, Basil, let's cheese it. <laughs> Poor solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> to work things through with the Kitsune as well as you possibly can, with violence as a very, very, very final resort. And mind reading, I think, should be permissible for the sake of rescuing Hale. Hale was an unhinged, dangerous person who fired plasma beams at anyone who looked at him wrong and hoarded dangerous items. It was only a matter of time before it was a direct threat to the village. Do you want me to admit that it personally benefited me that Hale had come into possession of an item which help is going to help me restore Voya to the governorship? Sure, it benefits me, okay? But I'm also willing to die for this. It's not... It's for your. It's for the people. All right. Oh gosh, is the only way for Hale to wake up for us to kill the Kitsune? All right, slime is turned to stone. All hands, middle finger. Uh-huh. One hundred middle fingers <laughs> in all directions. Pounced on him and has been like clawing at him and clawing at him, and finally the way that Inri finds to like get Cat off him is just to blast her as hard as he can with this fireball uh-huh and that's and and so i imagine she would go flying across the room and hit into a bookshelf a bunch of bookshelf books all fall on the ground and stuff um she's knocked unconscious and neelith conveniently falls on the floor somewhere nearby but not squashed by books don't you talk to my son like that <laughs> erases uh the star map <laughs> It, it surges up a bit, and he casts uh, Manipulator's Mark through it um, and rolls a 26 on the attack roll. Lethal or non-lethal? Ooh. Hell yeah. Shoots straight at his eye, pierces through his head, and just sends the uh, Kitsune's corpse just onto the ground. circle back on people I am organizing to kill. Also, the <laughs> wife of the president of France <laughs> must also be killed. Uh, <laughs> y- yes, but I'm also uh, very uh, glad that you continue to specify a country outside of America so that it's no longer treason for you to say it. That's a thing in America, right? You're not, alla- <laughs> you're not allowed to say that you want to kill the president. I am allowed to say that, actually. I think. Austin, what do you say? <laughs> What? <laughs> Austin laws. Give me legal advice. Can I say it? <laughs> oh dear. Austin, save us from from ourselves. Yeah, let's stop talking about the Macron family and get into a podcast. Uh, we have a downtime scene to do today. The last episode ended with a dramatic murder. Or, well, there is a legal distinction between killing and murder, uh, mm-hmm. which is not for me as the omnipotent DM to decide, but. Let me paint you a picture before we level up. The picture is the library's on fire. Uh, 
slime has been turned to stone inside of her hecatonkery's body. Mm-hmm. Cat is unconscious under a bookcase. Um, both Aze and Drip are up, but uh, Hale is inside the glass case inside the previously locked room. The door has been reduced to splinters. The fire is raging, but it's not just the wood and the paper that's being damaged. The walls are melting because as Inri's brain leaks onto the floor, uh, whatever spell was keeping this place non-Euclidean is ending. And so the space itself is coming undone. And so there's a mad dash. Ah, uh, cripes. Aze presumably can uh, smash the case, pull Hale out, and you know start dragging him out. Uh, Basil can, or yeah, Basil can, I said drip before, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Basil can. Possibly. Yeah. Basil can pull Cat from under the, the books and start, you know, going towards the door. Um, with Inri dead, the flesh to stone did not become permanent. You have to maintain concentration for the entire duration of one minute, which is 10 rounds of combat. I think we got to six or seven. Mm. Uh, so Oof. the knife, the knife falls out of the Hecatonkery's head and, you become slimy once again, and you can start. Uh, you can, you know, scoop up Neolith, uh, who's still in her little bowl or her little cup, and everyone's just like dragging what's left of their <laughs> mangled bodies towards the exit. But there is only enough time to get out. You cannot recover Inri. You cannot get any of the powerful magical artifacts. And at, you all like stumble out into the snow as the space collapses behind you. And if you open the door to that cabin, it's just a cabin. It's just a nice, rustic, wooden building, no furniture, no no, no sign that it ever had been a cavernous library full of powerful items and a dead kitsune. I hope that dream spell was the good kind and not the torture kind. I just really hope that, like... This cancels all of my late fees. <laughs> we don't have to do that anymore. The constraints of a library are no longer upon us. Constraints. Damn it. <laughs> That's really the takeaway from this is like no more you know, dealing with being shushed when you're trying to you know, read old timey uh, poetry or whatever. It's the picture of the little girl in front of the building on fire, and you can prominently see the the sign that says library, and then you've added the text, become ungovernable. <laughs> we could just do a whole episode just, you know, breaking down what happens in the immediate aftermath. You know, Twin Peaks made two seasons about one murder. You can, you can infinitely break out <laughs> uh, one thing into a lot. But I think we skip ahead a little bit into this downtime um, to get some of the more... Uh, you know, thoughtful reactions rather than just the screaming. <laughs> ah, <Yeah. laughs> uh, I have here in my notes that the first scene is going to be Aze visiting Hale, capital H Hale, real Hale. Inri is always how I'm going to refer to the person whose cranium was perforated at the end of the last episode. <laughs> uh, so why don't you tell me about your level up, Aze, and then we will jo- we'll join Hale as he uh, kind of wakes up in uh, Venta's office yeah so level 10 um means an upgrade to the um to the starry form astral uh, astrological similarity feature so basically um the manipulator and the cycles bonuses and such those do 2d8 as opposed to 1d8 um and if he's operating under the scribe he also gains i believe um a I believe while he's underneath that, he f- actually floats. He can float around because uh, it's been originally the dragon, so he actually can float around. But the bigger benefit is that while in that form, he can shift between the different signs. So basically now, when he invokes it, all the signs appear in his body and different ones just sort of gleam when they're active at any given time. Um, in addition, uh, he gets I backed up some new spells. He got a new uh, cantrip. I picked up mending, or as I like to rename it, temporal reclamation, which I feel is a fun name for unwinding damage on objects. Uh, I was hoping maybe to help with some of the books, but you took away the library, so... <laughs> I just can't let you have access to 32 magical items. <laughs> no, that, that's <laughs> that fair I enough. Written down. That's too much. 
32 items. 32 items. <laughs> Austin, you're being a coward. <laughs> you distribute them among the pizza rats and the world ends in a week. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly what Henry was saying. It's a building full of nukes. Only the most responsible uh, patriarch, you know, of the village should have access to it. Give Philip a 32 nukes. <laughs> I, uh... Also, I've realized that Aze, I think, is... Yeah, one of the few that did not get any magic items that he's using from it, uh, whether that's due to my own hubris or otherwise, it just happens to be the case. But yeah, um, those are the main details of level up, you know, improved druid stuff and uh, some extra spells. Oh, I think I actually picked up. Yeah, I picked up um, as a regular spell for the time being healing word, which I've renamed as the cycles leaf, which sends a little leaf over to someone to do ranged healing. Huh. It, it's it's so as you said, we open on Inventus, actually, I guess, with <clears throat> Hale being taken care of. Yeah. We often think of Venta as the barber here, but it's the barber surgeon. Uh, this is where medicine happens if it's needed. Uh, so we're, we're in this cave. Uh, the mural that makes you feel like when you nut is uh, in the background. It's very nice and shimmery. Uh, you see Hale, the purple dragonborn goblin, uh, on the, like the operating table. Uh, not strapped down, resting, and then his eyes kind of slowly open. He sees your face, Aze, and says, All right, varmint, this time I got the drop on you! And tries to fire a plasma beam point blank into your face. I mean, Aze's not going to dodge it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm just going to roll because he's very weak and tired. I'm just going to make a little roll here. This is for my own benefit. I'm going to D100 to see if- uh, 52. So I was going for 50% if it actually even anything happens. It does with a 52. So uh, half of a tired plasma beam comes out of this uh, guy's face. Uh, so you're going to take some damage here. Love to open an episode. Uh, 17 damage as the beam. It's not the powerful beam that kneeleth you when you fought uh, Hale in the past. Mm-hmm. Because this person has been asleep for several years. And so you're singed by a purple beam. It like hits the ceiling and cuts a, a, you know, a scar into the barber shop. Uh, but then he kind of coughs and like, you know, <laughs> loses the beam. I will say number one, that 52 year old is exactly what my hit points are. So I thought it was going to be like roll D 100 for the damage. Just knock out Aze to start the episode. <laughs> That would be such an incredible opener. Like the last episode ends with you headshotting Inri, and this opens with you getting headshotted. Just... <laughs> wow! Perfect. This Four. episode ends with a with a mysterious sniper just taking out Aze, and that's the next arc. Is us trying to figure out what the fuck happened. <laughs> Someone commented in the for in the Discord that I'm the only person not playing multiple characters this season, and someone added that we know of. I'm like, oh, yeah. the opportunity presents itself. I'm not opposed to it, <laughs> but the only character I was thinking about possibly playing was Hale, and up to this point, that would have been very difficult to justify. In any case, um, after Ozzy just like takes the hit, he just sort of smiles and says, "Looks like you got the jump on." Looks like you got the jump on me, partner. And he just leans and just gives Hale a bit of a hug after that. Hale kind of like half recognizes that it's you. You're much, uh, I guess not much, but you're older than he last saw you. And he's like uh, kind of groggy. So he's just like, "Uh, make sure you be on your guard, partner. There's a there's a goblin out here. He's up to some tricks. You got to watch out for that Laszlo. We were just dealing with Laszlo. Um, Hale, it's been a while for you. I Laszlo was, well, Laszlo wasn't even Laszlo, and whoever Laszlo was, was imposing as you for, it must have been a few years now. I don't need all that information, hombre. I just, you got a snack or something? <laughs> I, I I think I brought something with me. <laughs> All right, where where did you say Laszlo was? I need to give that I give that boy the pe- the kiss of death. Do you know about the kiss of death? It's a dragonborn technique. You you, you get your mouth on their mouth and then you fire the beam. <laughs> it sounds what Godzilla did. It sounds like <laughs> thank, a pr- thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a good trick there, partner. But um, 
Lazlo's been dead for a while, and uh, the the guy got him, and the guy who got <laughs> and and I have to admit that uh, I was the one who, well, gave the kiss of death, as it were, on the guy who got you for the past while. Well, we can share the credit. I I I'll split the bounty with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good to me, partner. How are you feeling otherwise, other than, well, I assume pretty groggy there. Yeah, uh, I, I, th- I think the actual physical effects, as written uh, for the spell that Hale's recovering from imprisonment, aren't particularly bad. The uh, Kind of the whole idea is that you can't be hurt, you don't age, you don't need food or water or anything. So after just the disorientation of waking up after several years passes, there is no long-term effects of this. Um, so it's, it's mostly, I think, psychological, just right. Have, you're trying to explain you've been asleep for several years yep. and him just being like, I'm not going to absorb that right now. Yeah. No, thanks. Uh, I, I, I'm honestly, it's just like delay saying, um, by the way, your, your, your library and all your magic items are gone. Uh, just saying, um, Oh boy, I can't wait to get back to my magic items. <laughs> uh, uh, Ozzy just sort of like rubs the back of his neck, just giving like, uh, I, I uh, unfortunately got some bad news there, Bucko. Uh, Laszlo kind of messed that whole thing up for you. That son of a bitch. Let's get Barry to bring him back so I can kill him again. <laughs> <sighs> The son of a gun had all the contingency plans figured out. He even hid his own corpse after I did him in. So that man had a terrible case of jealous bitch disease. Let me tell you. You tell me about that. Given what he was saying about Voya to me and all that, I still don't entirely understand what his deal was, and I never will. He wanted he wanted my items. How how much clearer it could it be? He wanted my freaking items. He wanted your items because he wanted he wanted to do something to either keep Voya alive for rather forever or otherwise keep her in control forever. I knew it. It was that damn wand. He always came by us trying to give me the da- get, get trying to get me to give him the damn wand. Uh, which wand are you talking about? Uh, it was a new one I got at the beginning of the... Well, I don't even know what time it is anymore. It was the beginning of the summer for me. Uh, it was like a, a wand. It was made out of a spine. Like a person spine. You know, the thing it's inside... Uh, I'll turn around. I'll, sh- I'll poke it for you. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I follow. I follow. You don't need a show. <sighs> he was va- deeply interested in keeping Voya alive. And I remember the day that... Well, Laszlo disappeared, and he must have gone over and confronted you in the library at that point. I remember storming out of the house in a huff because he and Voya were just arguing for so long that it was just another night of putting up with that. I take it he just showed up and did something to put you asleep. Yeah, last I remember, he was trying to get me to give him the wand, and I was telling him he could huff my shorts, and then I think that I had this new item in that had some kind of sleeping spell on it, mm-hmm. and he, he went for it, and I went for it, and I had a beam, and he had a stupid face, and then I woke up. If there's anything you want, anything else you want to know about what's happened over the past few years, you're welcome to ask. I'll tell you everything you need to know, Hale, as, and, well... If it means anything, I'll do whatever I can to help rebuild the library. Maybe Potter can give me some kind of commendation, some kind of medal for bravery? Well, Potter's no longer the governor, but I'm pretty sure the current one might be uh, interested. It's actually uh, Philippa, you might remember her. She's a bit older now, but she's currently the governor. After I'll, That little geek is always dropping things in the gears? Well, she's not so little. I think she's still very <laughs> much an academic. But, is, is very um, much an ac- academic. 
a, a euphemism for drops rats in gears. That's pretty much anthropology. That's pretty much what anthropology is. <laughs> I, I think there's more of a euphemism for being a geek, but I guess you could say that dropping things in gears is an academic venture. <laughs> That's engineering. Scientific yeah. method. I want to know yeah. what happens, cause and effect. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we can, we can, we can. I'm pretty sure that talking with her, she will square with some things with you. Um, I also have to, well, say that Voya is no longer around in town. I've uh, taken over as the mystic. That's. Uh oh. Uh oh. I mean. I mean, congratulations. <sighs> Is there something about Voya not being here that's causing concern, Hale? Well, she was kind of a big draw for our whole situation, and no, it's fine. I mean, I, we don't need all the people to show up and give me their magic items. I'll survive. <sighs> I, I agree that I don't have quite the draw as Voya. Um, granted, I have a couple of I wouldn't say assistance. I have, well, uh, I have I have one shorts at the house and a nar a narwhal unicorn around, and they might be able to draw some attention. But it's not the same as Voya. I have to say, boy, how do you say a unicorn? Oh, I bet I could trade that for a whole mess of wands. <laughs> that unicorn. I will say that that unicorn is my son. I do want to introduce you to him, but... Oh, boy, you nasty. You nasty. <laughs> it's it's a complicated story. Well, it's not Ian. complicated, it's confusing. The genius Ben's made... gonna come out from behind the screen. You gotta give this boy a little snip. You gotta stop this man. <laughs> I, uh, Jesus Christ. The, the genius had some flumps. One of them had a slingshot. It They hit me in the face, and the unicorn just came out from my forehead. A tale as old as time. In exactly. It's a classic tale, but... <sighs> See, Hale thought it was Aze who had some flumps. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally going to turn that into some kind of innuendo, but at the moment passed. <laughs> uh, Aze will... Uh, Aze will last... Well, I'll add well, as a... In, in any case, I have to apologize. I never realized that you had been replaced after these years, Hale. I just wish I had noticed sooner and did something sooner, but... Yeah, what the hell's up with you bastards? I'm gonna take this up with the new rat killer in chief. She needs to set y'all straight. I, I didn't notice the change in signs. He... He imposed... The, I, maybe I should have noticed when he started just loaning out magic items more casually. That should have been a tip, but... Wait, he get. He gave out my items? I'm gonna need to get those back. That might be a little tough given some of the recipients, but it did give us more information about what the items did. I'll get them back. I have a plasma beam. I'm not worried. Uh, for the time being, we're dealing with a bit of a threat. Laszlo, Laszlo, in quotes, uh, said that whatever his plan was, has already been put in motion. So something might be happening and I think we need to be prepared for it, but I still need to live with the fact that despite my efforts to not kill others, I ended up being the one that killed that killed him. Yeah, it seems rough moaning me. Glad that's not my problem. That would suck. Uh, well, I've already been accused of killing Voya, and that's a whole different matter, but... Yeah, you need to stop killing people, boy. Just tell everyone what's up with the cave and Voya. <laughs> <laughs> Neelith yelling from outside the cave in her little the only, <laughs> the only person knows about the cave is Nobi right now, and Basil. Basil knows. Basil's gonna yeah, I, ask some questions. You can't lie well, to your son. And, and Drip, yeah. Drip, Basil, and Nobi, the three animals there know about the cave. No one else does, but that's probably gonna change at some point. <laughs> yeah, I think as it becomes clear that Hale's not really interested in uh, empathizing with your situation, uh, Venta pops his head uh, through the screen into like the privacy area uh, with his uh, mask on, gloves on, uh, and a scalpel and says, Y'all need me to cut something off, you said? 
Uh, not at the moment, Vent. I think we'll be fine. Hale's going to need to spend some time coping with the rebuilding process for the library, but... Okay, just let me know if you need something cut off. It's my specialty. It's... I have no response to that. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's your, good. Your event is too fucking good, Austin. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so next up, uh, Philippa has a downtime scene. Let's know how she leveled up, uh, and then we can set that whole thing up. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, it's Philippa level ten, Guardian Spirit. So basically, um, we haven't seen <laughs> Philippa doing a lot of spell casting or combat or whatever in a while but uh those who remember those many many episodes ago uh that she liked to summon summon animals and fae and such and basically the guardian spirit um means that if i have a totem out on the battlefield if i have that spell card active um then my beasts and fae that i summon will basically regenerate a bit of health every turn which is cool so we joined Philippa back in the governor's lodge. Uh, Nobi's there in his little paddock eating some hay in the corner, just vibing. Um, and Very shows up, our friendly pig priest. Obviously, I think, uh, Philippa, you would like to talk about uh, the ramifications, moral, ethical, legal, of what just happened. Uh, he's here for a different reason, <laughs> but... Um, my read on Philippa, she doesn't wait for him <laughs> to bring up his business. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> was that she would be like, "Oh, fairy, I'm so relieved to see you. This is I you you know, I think she's like um sort of shaking it like if if you know um sort of shake, shaking a pointing finger, sort of like, yeah, yeah to indicate how how right on Vary is like uh, this is how you know someone is a good priest you're you're showing up right when I need you I, 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 did you even know that there are these I am dealing with enormous ethical and moral ramifications and I, I, I needed a shoulder to, to to lean on and here you are this is wonderful anyway um so murder let's talk <laughs> very approaches your desk you're like pacing up and down the lodge very uh goes behind your desk turns your chair around then goes to the other side and turns the guest chair around and sits down <laughs> it's like pulling out your chair for you um, and just says of course, I'm here for any spiritual matters the governor needs. That's always been my role here. So I think I'm, Philippa I'm... like turns from her pacing in, and the momentum from pacing like into the chair, which I've always imagined as being a swivel chair because it's the governor's. It's a big deal. You know? <laughs> um, uh. And so that she just like she just basically because she's only like three, three foot tall, so she basically just hops up onto this chair and spins. Like, I think I think actually not just 180. She goes the whole way around and then once one half again to face very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other option for the scene, of course, is that it's just a really heavy, like, mahogany chair. And so it takes very a full, like, 20 seconds to turn it around, <laughs> which is also a good image. But, but you spinning. Also, if you're spinning on a swivel chair because you're an owl, your head is always rotating, so you're not looking away from him. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. No matter how your body swivels. <laughs> Stupid season. Eventually, she grabs the desk to stop it spinning, and <laughs> she's like, "Yes, I sent the Moist Watch to perform um a, a, an interrogation, I suppose, a recovery mission. But I said that violence should be a last min, uh, a last resort, and they have they have killed someone. Well, of course." Killing is not ideal, but there's the, in pretty much every faith, the uh, distinction between killing and murder. Uh, there's actually a lot of very important killing that gets done in most beliefs. Uh, I would say, I would say the circumstances under which you can do some killing comprise a large body of all of uh, faith, so. Yeah, but this was not um, for spiritual nourishment. It was to free someone from a spell. Uh oh, you're gonna be very disappointed <laughs> in what I have to say. Are you familiar uh, with the concept of uh, the ban? Ah, uh, I don't think so. Okay, so basically, if someone is not part of your in group, 
Uh, you can kind of kill them with impunity. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I realize this might seem upsetting. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to ease into it. Uh, boy. Hmm. Oh, yes, we have this at Goodfellas University, actually. We call this, um, um, you snooze, you lose rule. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, numbers 21 verse 2. Uh, you snooze, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should have referenced the following verse where it's like, also, if the bitch had it coming, it's completely cool, you know? That's it, the... No, that is in there, yeah. <laughs> okay, but we must consider that our village... Uh, even in a model in which uh, everyone is entitled to accept them, exempt themselves from the laws of their culture when it comes to outsiders, our village um, traffics in outsiders. Our entire economy is based on uh, the trade of uh, travelers passing through the town. Can you imagine if a religion was about uh, showing mercy and forgiveness for people and specifically had a whole parable about uh, someone who was like an uh, immigrant and you had to be nice to them? And then that religion was based about around, uh, you know, practiced around being mean to immigrants. Wouldn't that be fucking crazy? <sighs> that would be kind of nuts, right? <laughs> I mean, it'd be bad writing because it doesn't match, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, major, major plot hole there. Oh. <laughs> oh no i'm gonna get in trouble with the objective media critics on youtube um so philippa says let's think um i am just concerned that we are setting a um precedent with the moist watch and that if there is not at least some reckoning this sets the precedent that the moist watch can essentially execute anyone they deem it necessary to do oh that would certainly be a bad precedent i guess uh, spiritually speaking the important thing is to kind of uh carve out the very specific instances in which they can extrajudicially end someone's life and uh spiritually speaking that shouldn't be anyone from the village uh, that's my, that's how I see it. <laughs> he pulls out a, a little pocket, uh, book of like verses and cycling like through it. And he's like, yeah, so you shouldn't be able to just kill your in group. If they're part of us, that's a no, no. <laughs> but if the Kitsune was not part of us, then not only can you, but you should go hog wild on them. Philippa has gotten up from the chair and has walked over to the window as he's saying this. And she's looking at the Egregore. So does the Egregore still have the tails? Oh, no, that's so good. Thank you so much, Sophie. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the Kitsune tails, like, wither and uh, disappear. Maybe not at this very moment. There's, like, one left. Maybe you, you catch the last one. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, Inri is dead, so Inri is off the Egregore. Mm. I think that Philippa, uh, still looking out the window at the Egregore, says... Um, this is exactly what I was pondering when I sent the moist watch there. Even if, even if the Kitsune was in disguise, was pretending, was manipulating, I think he may still have technically been part of our community. Ah, but we have a mechanism for that, actually. It's called posthumous excommunication. <laughs> It sounds a lot like you are just trying to run cover for a mistake. No. Would any serious organization, for example, <laughs> dig up a body and put it on trial to excommunicate it? <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> no, I only, I've only seen um, indigenous uh, groups practice this against colonial <laughs> shitlords, and it was actually kind of based. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> I'm sorry, based on what? <laughs> based on these? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we are just on a mechanical bowl of tonal whiplash, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Those are gonna keep things from getting too dark. <laughs> <laughs> I think Philippa says, um I think this has all brought me around just in a circle to what I was already 
contemplating that in our group or out of our in-group, the Kitsune is still a person who now the Moist Watch has killed and... It may be one thing to say there was no other way. They could not have gotten Hale back without doing it, and he wouldn't have let them, and it was the only condition to end the spell, but it still does not sit quite right with me. Very offers you a com- comforting smile and, you know, uh, puts his hand on your, uh, I guess your hand. <laughs> I was going to say shoulder, but you're sitting on the other side of a big desk, so you probably can't reach that far. <laughs> yeah. And he goes to reach for your shoulder, can't reach, kind of uh, tries to smoothly transition <laughs> to patting your hands. Um, <laughs> Very tries to keep it cool um, and says, yes, we all have to carry the burden of the things that have been done in our name. And it's very difficult. I, I know a lot of people follow uh, the snake, one of the three deities I serve. Um, and she got up to some really wild, morally gray things. And uh, some of her followers go farther than I can uh, comfortably justify. And, you know, sometimes you have to say the world works in mysterious ways and it's out of your hands. And sometimes you got to do the best to make up for it. Um in this particular situation, if Aze did something wrong, we do have a gender-neutral confinement area. <laughs> um, if, if he didn't do anything wrong, then maybe it's your job to comfort uh, the villagers with, with your thoughts and justifications so that we can all make peace with it and sleep at night. But I don't think you're going to get a lot of people who uh, are too broken up about the situation. It's 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 easy, it's easy to feel bad when your friend dies. It's much harder to feel bad when a criminal dies. The only way I would want to put Aze in some confinement area is if he was a crazed killer on a spree who might be. A- pose a threat to people um, presently, and uh, (laughs) I don't think he is. Um, But thank you. This has given me thought, because when I defended the genius at um, their trial, I said that the Moist Watch should exist to make things better. And I think if I follow through that rule, we cannot make it better that we had to kill the Kitsune But we could, supposing the Kitsune is accepted as being a member of the community, which he was, whether we knew he was there or not, we could hold a service for him. Obviously, no one has to attend, I think, except the Moist Watch. I think that would be fair. But I think that might be the way to find some semblance of justice here. Of course. That's that's my role, of course, to set up a service, so I'll get right on that. Thank you. Uh, that does remind me of uh, some other business uh, that I had kind of in the background here. I've been working on for a while. I wanted to bring it to your attention. I know you're very busy, so I'll just get to the point. Um, you know the quarry, the kind of snake lobsters? They stabbed me. I, I saved you very heroically. Oh, yes, we had a big battle, yes. Yes. Well, uh, so the, the, the space, the veil between our world and theirs, the Dalcor, has been thin this winter. Uh, we got their attention when the whole Baku debacle. That's fun to say. Baku debacle? Baku debacle? Baku debacle. Baku debacle? Baku debacle. What? <laughs> oh, my God. I've gone so many years without saying Baku debacle. Oh, I've wasted so many, <laughs> so much time. No, no, be say Baku debacle. <sighs> Mama, please. I really hope this episode's title is Baku Debacle. <laughs> it can't be. We already had the Baku arc. That'd be very confusing. <laughs> yeah, um, but but I've only said it once and I need more excuses to say Baku Debacle. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much better than I thought it was before I said it. <laughs> we haven't had slime scene yet. I assume Mari's going to say some wild, mad, disgusting shit, and then that'll be the title. <laughs> That's usually how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the episode ends up being called Deadly Prolapse. <laughs> oh! 
Uh, it's like we are writing the list of episode potential episode titles. You just leave the top five entries blank for whenever Mari talks. It's like, okay, they're going to go with the top five no matter what. I just say whatever. <laughs> it's brilliant. Uh, but no, Barry says the Baku debacle got their. Uh, I, I fucked up. But. <laughs> Very says the Baku debacle uh, got their attention and they've been, you know, trying to infiltrate the village ever since. But of course, mm. I've been deputized into the Moist Watch. I'm kind of an honorary member, if you will. Uh, and so I've been working on some rituals to kind of uh, fortify the veil. I, I do not entirely remember this, but uh, okay. Uh, it was implied. You gave me a look, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that I make a lot of documentation for everything, and I did not document this look. Okay, well, all I wanted to say, I, I assume that I have your permission to conduct the ritual to fortify the veil, but I am going to need a couple of people to hold hands and chant some some hymns I wrote. Uh, I have a little flourish on here. I think they're probably more beautiful than they need to be, strictly speaking, but the point is to get the job done, and I just I need you to, you know... I need your say so, boss. And he turns and winks at Nobi, who just has a mouthful of hay. <laughs> what Nobi has is a mouthful, uh, like a mouth open of hay, and it all falls out of his mouth because <laughs> uh, he's uh, very upset about this situation. Maybe Philip is like, um, uh, Nobi, is something wrong? <laughs> he's like, um, um, uh, I just, um, um. Very just uh, tries to save him and says, nobody's been very helpful. He's the one who's been helping me get us over the finish line, dot all my T's, cross my I's, you know? <laughs> oh, well, he just knows how much I love paperwork and making sure everything is done correctly. Utterly ethical, completely approved, peer-reviewed. Absolutely. I, um, I don't think I see any reason to keep the... Portal to the nightmare dimension full of shadow <laughs> monsters. Oh, as I'm talking it through, it seems more and more I'm sure of this. Yes, you should close it right away as soon as you can. Yeah, portal's a weird word. I accidentally used it earlier, too, and I didn't want to confuse Nobi. It's not a portal. It's more of a veil. Um, sorry about that, bud. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, uh, uh, um... Um, you, yeah, the thing about, um, uh, you, um... As you're stammering, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out a communion wafer, as if it's a little <laughs> treat for you. It's like, here, here you go, buddy. Just, like, puts it in your mouth while you're trying to stammer something out. <laughs> um, I, uh, mm, 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 mm. Oh, There, you ooh. love a snack, don't you? Holy snack. <laughs> well, um, yeah, thank, thank you for this, uh, very... Yes, I think you should uh, organize this, this ceremony. I think that a ceremony uh, to close or close the veil, remove the veil. What do you do with the veil? You fortify a veil. Well, to, yes, hold hands and fortify the veil. This sounds very useful and like we should not have shadow demon nightmare monsters. I mean, one thing if you even think about it, if a lonely traveler comes through our village and just stays for a few nights, they could just become a... <laughs> oh, wow, we should really get on this right away. And uh, Nobi says, uh, Oh, oh, um, you know, a ceremony that you is happening is that, um, uh, Neelith is going to be taking, uh, Ruth's body soon, and you should drop in on them very, that's important, I think you should drop in on them, and, um, yeah, see how everyone's doing. Oh, gosh, yes, I have so many things to plan. I have to organize a service for the Kitsune, I have to see about Ruth and... Neela's situation? I have to reassure the people? Oh, what busy times. From what I understand, Neelith and Ruth are uh, bonding soon. You should probably see them today. Of course, of course. Thank you very much. I'll get right on that. Uh, Philippa? Uh, well, you know, let's p pencil in something for the service. Uh, we both have a lot of work to do, so I'll see you soon. Fantastic, yes. Hey, hey, do you- hey, ha! Uh. Uh, do you have more of those things? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they come in. Uh, they come in original, uh, vanilla, and refreshing cool mint. <laughs> oh my god! Where, where do you, where do you keep them? <laughs> well, all my worldly possessions are in the igloo. So, 
Wow, wow. Cool. Have a nice day. Good luck with the funeral and stuff. You'd be surprised how many communion wafers I still have. I don't go through them as fast as you would think with such a devout yeah, village. Really crunchy. <laughs> oh, boy. They really suck, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big time. But I think a sheep would like them, so that's what I'm kind of trying to play out. <laughs> I love that. Um, so I, I have a list of downtime scenes here. This is this is an interesting one because Basil's never had a downtime scene before. And uh, Laura actually has elected to give me a break. So why don't you uh, tell us about your level up and then uh, set that scene up with someone who's not me while I eat dinner. <laughs> uh yeah so the first of my level ups of this week is basil um so for level 10 basil gets a bit of extra health um gets a new otherworldly patron feature is the main thing so again my patron is the machine and i now have steel resolve uh, starting at 10th level, your patron's logic-driven rigor teaches you to compartmentalise your thoughts and emotions. You're immune to the frightened condition, and you don't lose concentration on your spells when you're incapacitated unless you're petrified or rendered unconscious. Basically, nothing's gonna stop Basil now just being like, run straight at the problem, everything's fine. Uh, additionally, when forced to make constitution saving throws for concentration, you can just choose to automatically succeed after seeing the roll. Um, you can only do that, I think, uh, once per short or long rest, but you can just be like, nah, no, I'm, I'm still concentrating, it's all good. Nice. Um, nice. So yeah, Basil's gonna spend his first downtime scene with Arze, because... Oh boy. I mean, honestly, who else is he gonna spend his time with so far? <laughs> I mean, listen. They listen. They've only existed like as a pair for so long, but they still got a lot of like father son antics to get up to. I guess. So yeah. So I I feel like I feel like as soon as there is an opportunity for downtime and things have slowed down, Basil's gonna be like, "So, Dad, um, I have not really had a chance to look around. Is that do you want to give me the give me the tour of town? Where where do we start? What should we? What what's there to see around here?" Oh, well, there's plenty to see. Uh, the There's a, a good amount of the town that's not nearly as busy as it is during the, during the spring and summer when travelers are coming through, but... Uh, oh gosh, yeah, there's going to be a part of the year where there's going to be just, just people everywhere, huh? Mm, absolutely. In fact, everyone that goes to the world above has to pass by here because wait wait there's another world there's a world above mm, yes at the top of mount grendel uh, there's a opening that leads to a new world uh, well, i mean what what are people ending up there there's so much world down here to be seen still yes but the world here is well for some people it's old there's perhaps not as much as what people would like and the world above is unusual and new uh we that is to say myself and uh well my former mentor voya and others who study the study the stars we call that world and the stars that are contained in it the firmament um and anyone who wishes to go up there has to be approved to do so by the mystic of grendel which as uh, the Kitsune suggested, was Voya until I took over for her responsibilities. And so now I, during the times outside of winter, stay down here and approve people to go on up to the world above. And when, uh, when the traveling season is done, people come back, they bring their forms which with their notes on the back, their star charts on the back, and then I spend the winter trying to figure out what the lay of the stars are above the world. Okay, okay, I see. So you don't go up there, you just, you know, you, you sign off on people who are probably going to be able to come back safely and they bring you back, you know, notes and whatnot. Mm, precisely. Um, I used to go to the world above myself, but 
I don't anymore as mystic. There's no opportunity to do so outside of the winter. So as Basil and Arze are walking around uh, town, Basil's going to wait until there's a moment where it doesn't look like we're near anyone else. Like maybe we've, you know, we're taking a bit of a detour along a nice scenic route or something. And Basil's going to turn to Arze and just say, Look, I'm... <laughs> I'm not good. I'm not good at um, beating around the bush, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be direct with you. Um, it sure sounds like you know something about Voya being missing, and maybe there's a cave involved, and that there is something that like it would probably help for us all to know. And I don't want to be like I don't want to push you to talk about something you don't want to talk about, but it's it's. Pretty clear, pretty quickly. There is something that 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 you are sat on. Just reach into it, sort of pet a hand along Basil's cheek for a moment before looking Basil in the eyes and say, "There are things that I know, but I also had made a promise to not disclose what happened." And given what the Kitsune was doing, I have a suspicion as to why I had to, I have had to keep what I know secret. Okay, well, how about we, we play a little 20 questions? <laughs> it, does what you know... Mm, how do I put this? First question, where do babies come from? <laughs> would, would, <laughs> would knowing what you know, if, if more people in the village knew, would that help us to prevent whatever the Kitsuno was trying? I don't think so. I don't know if that's the case. But I don't think knowing what I know would have helped prevent what the Kitsune was trying to do. Do you know if we still need to worry about whatever the Kitsune was trying to do? I have a feeling that if the Kitsune had known what I, what I know about what happened, that it would have been likely that he would have just killed me outright or have done something else. But part of me suspects that in addition to having access to Hale's collection of magic items, that imposing as one of my closest friends would have given him access to information about what had happened if I had disclosed things uh, more forthright about it. But It seems like there is something big and scary going on in this town and... At some point, the people around you are going to need to know as much as they can to help. If this is still a potential threat. In the aftermath of Master Voy's disappearance, I was confronted by others in the village. And I lied at the time and tried to say that I didn't know what happened or I didn't see what happened. And Pastor Very... Uh, the, the man who was nearby when you first came into the world, um, he witnessed me leaving the village with Voya. And so, the night that she disappeared, I was with her. And I'm assuming you went to the cave, I'm guessing. For the time being, I will ask that you don't disclose that to anyone else, but... I, I know, I'll, I'll get it. I... Don't know if there's anyone else who is trying to do something with that information, but... Do you know if Voya can come back, and if so, is that something we should be excited or worried about? I will say that she was very old at the time. The Kitsune, shortly before she left, before I took her out of Grendel, he was arguing with her about keeping her alive forever, and she was not interested in that. Thank you for being patient while I ask you all of the secrets about your mysterious background and past that you do not wish to or cannot share. I do appreciate it. I do want to move us on to, uh, you know, lighter topics. Um, where do babies come from when they're not coming out of your head? <laughs> 
Dad, why don't I look like you? <laughs> and with that, I assume the scene begins to fade away. Uh, Venta pops out of the nearest house and says, You need anything cut off, Basil? <laughs> As Venta gets cut off by Discord's anti shouting algorithm in the background. <laughs> Uh huh. I just like the idea he's lurking behind every building with a scalpel, just trying, just waiting to see if anybody <laughs> needs anything. <laughs> All right. I, I think that I think that's seeded enough, like tidbits of information, without opening the the fire floodgates <laughs> for now. <laughs> I mean, there's not much time left to open the floodgates, but we'll get there. <laughs> so it's time for the Mari Hour. Let's see what disgusting stuff. And cat. <laughs> no, I'm it's here too. Yeah. yeah, come on. I've become I've... a mother, and now I'm trying to be a responsible parent. All right, so I need slimes level up. Actually, cats level up, because uh, we didn't get the Dream Team stats, and then introduce the scene. All right, I've leveled up to level 10 like everybody else, and I got two new abilities and a new cantrip. My new abilities are Dream, which means I can go inside somebody's dream and control the dream and... Uh, your willing creature enter the trance state acting as a messenger while the trance messenger is aware of his or her surroundings but can't take actions or move. So, yeah, so I can shape the creature's dream. And uh, yeah, it's cool. And then also I got dominate person. Mm-hmm. Same. Oh, you too? <laughs> no, <laughs> that, that was a sex fine, joke. <laughs> <laughs> I can also enter the trans state for that matter. <laughs> oh, you attempt to beguile a humanoid that you can see within range, but I'm going to apply this to other things. But yeah, I can now if I want to. Should I show choose dominate another person? People are always asking me to cast that spell, but I'm always so tired. <laughs> <laughs> the weary top. When you tweeted that, Sophie, Joa immediately sent it to me, and I was like, yeah, I follow Sophie, but thank you. <laughs> a lot of uh, people identify with it. Uh-huh. Uh, mm. Dream is such a written for the DM spell. Uh, it's so terrifying when a, when a player takes it, because it's it's like yeah. the idea behind it from a game design perspective is to like be able to send you know coded messages to your players, and then when the players get their hands on it, oh boy, I feel the fear. Wait, what does it do? You can shape someone's dreams and send them messages and they can take psychic damage from it. It's just like, wow. the, it's basically yeah. trolling. It's like it's like a hate <laughs> campaign in your mind. <laughs> oh, right. What if I, I made you have a nightmare so bad that it killed you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. 3d6 psychic damage isn't that much to like a boss, but to a regular villager in the world of D&D, you can, you can just start <laughs> killing people in their dreams at will. It's fucked well, up. Well, don't worry. That's not how I plan to use it today. It's 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 the fucking, um, oh, what's the, the horror movie with the person who kills you in your nightmares? Freddy um, Krueger. Oh, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Night Rail on that. Elm Street. The first one, very scary. People forget because the later ones are so silly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The second one's very <laughs> gay. I saw that one first, and I assumed they were all like that, and I was disappointed. Wes Craven's new nightmare is very meta, and I assumed they were all like that, and I was disappointed. <laughs> wow, we all we all come at this from a different angle. Isn't that delightful? <laughs> uh, Cat, though, you also have a barbarian level. Sure, Cat is now level 10, just like everybody else, and... Uh, That means I have Shielding Storm. At 10th level, you learn to use your Mastery of the Storm to protect others. Each creature of your choice has the damage resistance you gained from the Storm Soul before... Wait. From the Storm Soul feature while the creature is in your Storm Aura. This is basically just like everyone gets a buff when I rage kind of thing. You're a Snow Barbarian, so... Right. Uh, All right. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. But Cat got knocked out in the fight last time. Oh, yes. And you said that there should be a consequence for that. Mm-hmm. I thought the most obvious thing would be um, fear of fire. Uh, Pyrophobia, from... which a big it's big on podcasts recently, I would say. <laughs> Coming up a lot. Many such cases. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually thought about what happened in the scene. And what Kat uh, actually saw was her mother getting turned to stone, which she tried to like fight the guy who was doing that and then got knocked out. And she was, like, very willing to charge in and get in this firefight, but it was, like, the 
the urgency that her mother was being turned to stone was the kind of like dreadful bit of it. And so I think that actually the fear that like is the repercussion from this is the cat has like a fear of people being turned to stone, which I know doesn't sound but like, or like she'd also be afraid of statues, I think. But like, I know that doesn't sound like it's going to come up or anything, <laughs> uh-huh. but I just think that's the most logical um, consequence. That would be a great way to get out of this mechanic if you're like, yeah, now I'm afraid of left-handed mummies. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't come up. Um, but no, that's good. I also want to say we're recording several weeks in the future from the audience hearing this. So if if in the Discord you were saying, uh, how come you don't use Dispel Magic with the fan to get rid of the flesh to stone as you're turning to stone? It's too late. Mari can't hear you. We're sorry. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm not reading it. <laughs> God damn. You all have to understand that I'm in a constant state of dissociation, and that's why my one liners are so strange. Join the squad. <laughs> dissociation. Woo. Uh, so, Cat and Slime, where are you two headed off to? Oh, I'm bringing drugs. Like I had already said for many weeks, you can't say I can't. I told you weeks ago I wanted to bring drugs. I'm not arguing with you. I, that there's okay. A that was off camera, so the audience doesn't know. I could just lie and say you never said that. Uh, but B, uh, there is a great precedent for that in the show. Lauren's characters always have drugs on them, so it would be weird okay. for me to deny you that. So I'm bringing the same drugs. My dog is freaking out right now. Um, I'm bringing <laughs> narc, the- narc, <laughs> narc. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing the same drugs that Slime took so many episodes ago where they screamed for 10 seconds. It's going to be a big vial because there's a lot more of mold. And I just thought, you know, we've tried everything else. Why not have a group trip? Cat can come too. We can try talking, but my plan is throw the drugs on mold, then dream. Yeah, I want to say in the HBO adaptation, when uh, Basil and Aze are taking a tour around the village, we see in the background, uh, you buy drugs from Marina. Uh, like That's just one of the, the funny background events, yeah, is yeah. that you, you just get like an industrial tub of psilocybin from the neighborhood tailor. The background scene is like Marina coming out with progressively more drugs and slime being just shaking, shaking her head. No, no, that's not enough drugs. My three no. heads. My three yeah, heads. right. And with all your arms gesturing like big, more just gesturing more. as wide apart as you can. I do love. I set up the whole thing that like Marina was secretly a drug dealer. I thought someone at some point would make a deal out of that. It's very funny that it's not problematic at all, and everyone just rolls with it. <laughs> um, so you're carrying a big tub of drugs with you over to the forest, the taiga at the edge of Grendel, where Mold lives, and you can see their blue slime mold like hanging from tree branches. You see it on the the woodland creatures, the squirrels, the the reindeer we established, uh the kind of like the herald of mold who guards the tree line is just this I've enormous been calling him Blue Dolph in my mind. Blue Dolph, yeah, the reindeer. Uh and so you and Cat uh, enter the the taiga and mold knows you're coming, but you aren't attacked. Um and as you get deeper into where you found them last time, I should say that mold has five good neighbor robots full of blue slime mold. I actually uh, went back and made sure uh, because you broke a lot of them and the only ones that mold uh, salvaged and filled with themselves are the ones that were unbroken. So kind of a consequence of leaving some of them alive is that now they are under mold control. And that is uh, that is Hales, uh, that is uh, Applewhites, that is Marina's, uh, and that is varies, I believe. I think if Ozzy's was also safe, if you didn't bring mention that one. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, by my count, uh, once again, we're in the future, so it's too late. If you want to tell me in the Discord that I missed one, <laughs> but that I've set it in stone. Five good neighbor robots, and remember these are like ten feet tall steampunk robots, which have been kind of filled with blue goo, uh, and they are just sitting in uh, around this clearing, kind of like sentinels. Uh, while you see the frost giant that is the main body of mold uh, enormous wearing like a horned helmet uh, inside of the frost giant's mouth is the skull of William the human uh, just a, a really imposing figure 
Hey, Nemesis Kinchild. I've brought drugs. Hello, Nemesis Kin Mother. Hello, I've brought drugs. Do you like all of my arms? Uh, should I roll to like your arms? Let me think here. <laughs> what does Mold think about your arms? I think M Mold says, <laughs> it seems like it would be difficult articulating all those limbs. Is it presenting a challenge? It's Ooh. not. It truly is not a, at all. It's easy. Oh, I bet it'd be easy for me too. Well, you wouldn't know because you're not doing it. You want to trade? You want to see if you, I could do all the arms? You can see if you could handle this uh, massive bulk with your tiny biomass? Yes. You could uh, arm wrestle with all of your bodies and <laughs> mother's uh, many arms body. Yeah, you want to do a strength contest? Mm, well, I brought drugs and I'm holding them all with all of my hands. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's wait until we're high to arm wrestle. That should add something to it. <laughs> okay, well, do you want to talk before the drugs? Uh, we've talked without drugs before, so I feel like we already got that experience. Okay, Kat, do you want to be? Do you have anything to say before drugs? Mm, I. <laughs> Um, I had not planned the conversation. I mm, wanted to come and be a positive influence um, on my child. So maybe we should go straight to the drugs. Okay. All right. Well, I'm do let's do it. I pour the drugs all over all of us. <laughs> and then I cast Dream, like in the movie Inception, and I get to be the architect. This episode's going to be played at our trial when the regime puts us uh, in jail for f influencing the youth. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I I'm just picturing, like, Slime as, like, the adversarial grandmother who's just trying to one-up a uh, cat as the mother by being the cool one that brings drugs to her, her grandkid that she hates, you know? Just I'll one-up it when I'm entirely on board with the plan. Just can't. No, yeah. your presence is important. <laughs> All right, Mari, you've signed yourself up to describe not only a mushroom trip, but one that takes place in a magic dream. So good luck, author. All right, I might have gotten myself in over my head. <laughs> I, I, I feel like, oops, I've gotten myself in over my head is the start to any great drug trip. <laughs> Do you want me to answer or do you want to monologue? I just want to be clear. You can. No, I, I want you to monologue. I'm, I, I want, want it to be, to be free. I want it to be free. Okay, whatever you want, you can do because we're on drugs. So you got to use drug rules. Uh huh. I mean, if it's going to be drug rules, I'm going to get naked. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Way ahead of you. <laughs> do you remember what it felt like to be part of a bigger thing? be part of the forest where all the trees would touch our mycelium and talk to each other. And whenever one tree needed food, the other trees would send them nutrients through our body. It felt good. And we were as big as the forest, bigger than anything on this world. And sometimes I think you miss being that big. And you're confused and you're lonely because you remember being part of something big. And we killed it. And you feel bad. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think how I would respond to this. I, I was going to do a joke, and then I was like, I think earnestly in this, like, dream space, drug space, that uh, a mold would give a genuine try and just be kind of enraptured by, like, remembering the sensation of being a forest. I'm closing my eyes right now while, while I'm speaking. I'm picturing myself as a beautiful forest and I the leaves. And you it's could like, feel the wind blowing through the trees because the trees would tell you what it felt like. And you can eat the memories of the little dead animals, and it was so simple. Mother. Yes? Was the... Were the birds part of you? Had to... Or could you talk to... The... Birds? I could only see their memories after they died. But then I learned I could take over their minds. But... It wasn't the same as talking to the trees. The trees wanted to talk to us, and the birds had to. I wonder a lot what a flock of birds thinks, or um, a swarm of insects, or rodents. Well, Cat, it feels like being part of a whole. 
each individual moving in sync with each other, like an ocean's wave or the current in the air. And sometimes that's what it feels like to be part of the village. That's why I like being part of a bigger thing that I can't control. Because I'm part of something bigger instead of being bigger. Mm, I like that too. Mold, I can't make you not force everybody to love you. But what I can remind you is that you're still responsible for your brain slaves. I think I'm going to do a charisma saving throw here to see how much of this gets through. Shit. <laughs> I crit. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you tried to convince Mold not to be a villain and you botched? Just these two rolls together are mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of just like and that like and <laughs> remember like when we're seeing the bar remember bar this is the important lesson to take never try <laughs> it's just like <laughs> no uh, oh no i mean i like what this says about slime and i still think we can have a fun scene here but i am going to remember this role is all i'm saying oh sure um but yeah i in the moment mold is giving a genuine try to imagine themselves as part of a greater whole without controlling it. And I think it is touching. I just think, like myself, imagining and feeling like a chimpanzee, I don't know how much behavior going forward that's going to change. Oh, don't worry. I have a plan. Oh, dear. Uh, Kat, I guess you you aren't uh, also kind of a forest at this moment. I don't know if you have the ability to perceive that like these two do, uh, but you can certainly speak. I think I have some of the ability to perceive that. What with all the drugs? That yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah, we literally poured drugs on everything. Yeah, I so. guess, yeah, they were f some kind of fantasy drug that works that way. Yes. <laughs> um, didn't someone once say that if you could perceive the world from the perspective of like an animal, that it would be the greatest high because their senses are so different from ours that it would be like uh, ridiculously <laughs> trippy, but... I would find it terrifying and horrible. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you don't you literally don't have the same brain structure and stuff. It would be completely incompatible. It'd be wild. My contention is that everyone would love to be a cat. So I'm kind of curious what cat would be um experiencing. Their 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 ant side, you know? Their their hive mind <laughs> ant side that right. can help you understand. We really have been underselling the ant. Can you be an ant in the forest and just really feeling like <laughs> Like you feel your ant roots, like you bond with the mother you ate or something. I don't know. You, you understand what it was like to be part of a flock. <laughs> I think that Cat has climbed a... Well, that, I think that's something that, like, in all seriousness, this is a character motivation for Cat that I've been thinking about a lot. That, like, Cat is, um, is part ant and is separated from the colony, but... Is it a colony? Is that what you... You know, um, Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, but has been raised by a mother who is a colony, and that's kind of an interesting situation for Cat. Um, I think Cat's cl like climbed a tree without realizing it, and it's like <laughs> hanging on a branch, like hanging on a branch over the like uh, you know prostrate bodies of uh, slime and mold. There's so much accidental symbolism. You just hit on that great colony idea. I've just been thinking about it for a while. I was also thinking the other day about how we have a lion and a lamb in the main cast. And uh, like, <laughs> it, if that had been intentional, I would roll my eyes at it. But like, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> I went to youth group too, bitch. But <laughs> oh, yeah, but it's a lion and a lamb that are inverted. Exactly. But also it wasn't intentional. The Miracolian was a, a joke from a previous season I brought back and the sheep was a just because Chris's schedule changed. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> um, incredible. Um, I think Kat uh, wants to say to Malt, um, um, Malt, I have not been around um, for you since I made you separate from mother, which um, perhaps makes me your mother, but also you are a lot older. Um, we have a complicated relationship. But, um, I want to have a good relationship. 
Mold is uh, in the frost giant body laying on the floor of the, the forest and the, like you're in the ant in the canopy. And so if Mold reaches up and the hand only goes so far, but then Mold comes out of the, <laughs> like un- from under the fingernail to reach additionally up towards you. And Mold says, we're actually all one. We're all connected. We've never been separate. Or do you just mean you and mother or everyone? Everyone. Our atoms aren't touching, and we're not touching. But that doesn't mean there isn't invisible bonds. It's an illusion. The distance is an illusion. Uh, exactly. I often have thought that mm, the structure that we see is illusory if we were to look for the whole um, there is so much empty space that we would find and the effects of a very 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 large creature would look a lot like the effects of a community working together We're all just one organism at different stages in the cycle of decay. (laughs) Mold, do you remember the fire? Do you remember 21st of September? (laughs) Yes, it did happen on the 21st of September, which is a date we don't understand because we're in a different world. (laughs) I think mold <laughs> opens his mouth and you just see William's skull in there and then the mold opens that skull's mouth and you're expecting a third skull inside but it's not there and mold's like oh damn I thought I had a little a little squirrel skull I think in there. Cat, from cat's perspective it, it there it just mouths are opening and opening right Yeah yeah just, like, <laughs> just looking right in the mouths and then oh, the opening never stops Oh god mm. <laughs> Fuck I thought you were going to s- I thought you were gonna say there was like a like a, a pizza rat skull inside of William's yeah. skull. Just <laughs> this is the I know they don't make movie posters for HBO series, but that's the movie poster. Is <laughs> skull inside skull inside skull <laughs> forever, mm, and Nobi looming over over all of them, <laughs> <laughs> watching. <laughs> Do you remember how the children ran to William to be set on fire because the agony of being controlled was too much? Oh, you're messing up my trip, Slime. Well, you're messing up our world. You can force these people and beings and creatures to love you, but eventually they'll go insane, like they did last time. Do you actually love them, or do you want them to be your things? Because Kat and I came here to love you freely, but it's not enough. How can there be enough love? That's all there is. What is love? Define it now. Don't hurt me. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, you walked right into that. Earlier, (laughs) earlier fucking sketch says it said it's been a while and I didn't. (laughs) I did it for the record. (laughs) You you, you showed restraint on that. I, I will agree. Uh, I also didn't linger too long on its bend to allow for that, uh, so. <laughs> I want to cast Dominate Person. Oh, my Lord almighty. All right. I, can, I can force you to listen. 17. Fuck. It is a 17 minimum. I love this because you're like, you can't force people to do things. Anyway, Dominate. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, I think at this, you're, you, this is a pretty, uh, I would say, uh, aggressive thing to do. And I think it, it affects the dreamscape in a little b- way. Like, I think the trees start looking more ominous. Like, the leaves start going from beautiful green to, like, orange. It becomes much more Halloween town in this beautiful <laughs> dreamscape. Uh, can you make a perception check, cat and slime? 11. 12. All right. Neither of those are good enough. Uh, to get all the information here, both are above average, though. So I want to say you both sense there's something else in the forest with you, something that is not slime, that is not cat, and that is not mold. 
Yeah, I think Cat would say, Molt, do you know there is um, something else in the forest? Mold says, The only thing in life is maximizing pleasure and minimizing pain. Everything else falls into those two categories. It's not wrong for me to want more love. It's wrong for you to try to stop me. Hedonism is an admirable goal, but I'm afraid you're missing the forest for the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Mari? Yeah, I've been waiting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, very good, very good. Mo mother, there is something else in the forest. I have the same feeling as you. I would like to roll investigation. All right, roll investigation. Remember, it's uh, you're high on mushrooms or you're high on fantasy psychedelics, so disadvantage. So I roll twice, okay. All right, 25 and 20. Get wrecked. One. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Uh, that's not a botch, though. That's a minus one, uh, one, right? That's correct. Yeah, there, there was a net two. All right. So half the party passes, though. Uh, slime, 25 and 20. Uh, so uh, t t explain to me how you investigate. I assume you shoot your spores into the air, but I don't want to do This is for different. You. Okay. I'm in control of the dream. So I just use my metaphorical slime-like tentacles to mm -hmm. seek it out. Yeah, I love also that you said you're in control of the dream because that's a good reminder that this is a dream space. So what could be here in the dream space? Uh, but uh, as your your tentacles curl around the trees um, and you are searching for what else is out here, you touch something and it you know, pulls back immediately because it doesn't want your tentacles on it. Uh, but it was some kind of creature. Uh, you got a 20, let me think. Um, and Slime, you have faced a Baku before. So I think you recognize the, that it feels like a kind of a tapir, elephant, ox, lion, <laughs> hybrid creature. Mold, I knew your answers were too simplistic. You've got an incel in you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep, you hear a voice coming from behind a tree. It says, hey, I just showed up. I heard I felt a good dream going on here, and I wanted to check it out. You could, you could, con <laughs> you could conjure a dream space, and I'm not going to know about it. It. Come on, you dizzy broad. Your greasy energies are not welcome. <laughs> the Baku debacle is welcome wherever it goes. Baku. Uh, drugs. <laughs> Baku Sh dot friend. dot dot drugs? Question drugs mark? <laughs> friend. Uh, come here. And she, she's like waving, beckoning with a big lazy paw, like mm -hmm. towards the branch that she's like playing on. Yeah, roll per roll persuasion. I guess with advantage because you have drugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it looks in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Quick cat, be a confident woman. It's their only weakness. <laughs> An eighteen. Uh, okay. Is so how this scene ends? Is you coax the Baku out from behind a tree, and then you all do drugs together? I open. <laughs> Inception, Cat. we cast dream again. <laughs> we, we've been we said that the, this is a fantasy drug that works by just like contact uh, yeah. being on you. And Cat does a very slime and mold move and opens her mouth where she caught a bunch of the drugs earlier <laughs> and like just vom vomits drugs onto oh. the Baku directly beneath her. <laughs> That's my baby girl. That's my baby girl. Just like mom dad. <laughs> Shotgunning hallucinogens. <laughs> this is that Baku's first kiss. Oh <laughs> my god! <sighs> Mother, can we keep him? <laughs> Only if he's good. But probably, yeah, that actually would, yeah, that goes along with the anatomy. He will you be good. <laughs> I'll be good! <laughs> <laughs> you are our friend now. <laughs> Weeping into his fedora. Uh, <laughs> it's experiencing a ego death. It'll be fine. It'll come back saying it learned what empathy was and think that's a big deal. So oh my God. <laughs> uh, you are underestimating ego death, mother. <laughs> he may come back with a different gender. <laughs> oh my God! I love that. <laughs> 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> Laura knows what I'm talking about. 
Look, sometimes look, sometimes you do psychedelics and you meet the the lesbian ball of energy in the sky and you come back very <laughs> That's different. Right. Baku. <laughs> now that you've kissed a female or something and you're good. <laughs> Want to help us brainwash mold into not taking over the world? Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe we should have that conversation with the Baku away from mold later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, first of all, get out of mold's head. Don't do that to my child. <laughs> Hey, you came into my world. I live in the dream. You make a dream, you come into my house. Fair enough. (sighs) I need to get my breath. Uh Uh So uh, a thing with the the yokai is that they don't give out their names readily. That was that's like a cultural thing. I I guess I kind of decided for them. That's why they were just the Baku and the Kitsune for so long. Obviously, Inri eventually did trust Nobi enough to give his name but now we've also brought up that maybe the baku is discovering something about themselves i don't even i don't even know if the name i had in mind is their name baku Mm -hmm. you've kissed my daughter it's only right that you give her your name (laughs) (laughs) oh boy does anybody have a a suggestion? A mustache is forming on the incorporeal slime energy <laughs> thought. Uh-huh. <laughs> Eight simple <laughs> rules for dating my aunt lion daughter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. I don't know how this happened. Austin, every time you allow drugs to be a part of Dice Funk, it goes off the rails. I once rolled insight on the universe. You, you, <laughs> this happens. <laughs> I think I've done that. I, I, you know, it, it, it all started with just being a naked tree in a naked forest, and now look at where we are. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, mm-hmm. I think the Baku uh, says "an," no "e," and then is silent for the rest of the trip. That's a beautiful name. They're enslaved to you forever now, cat. Oh. <laughs> 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 enslaved to. Uh, be friends. Whatever you want to define the relationship <laughs> as is valid. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's going to be hard to top that. Uh, let's do a nice, easy, <laughs> non-emotional scene. Neelith. <sighs> so but, so we're just going to leave us in the dream? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's only so much you can say about the end of a trip, you know? Uh, people well, how does different- Mold feel? Mold hasn't, like... <laughs> I, I listen. Mold uh, crit on that saving oh, yeah, throw. Okay. So I don't know that mold is gonna. Well, here's the thing: is you wouldn't know in the moment how mold was gonna feel about it one way or the other. So I'm not gonna stop trying to be a good parent to mold. I'm gonna go back and play catch. We next time. Yeah, we can't give up on our child. I tried yeah. to dominate their mind. We did our best. <laughs> Drug epiphanies. You sometimes have to come back later and go. Did you have an epiphany? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Neelith, uh, you're at Roost again? Yeah. Should I, should I read my, my new character sheet? I have, I, I, I leveled up. Not that I can use much of what's on there for a bit. Or should I wait until if I can use it? Yeah, well, here's the thing, is that the double ten sheet you prepared, uh, it does, it's a hybrid sheet with the Ruth, right? So, I, 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 I'll talk a little bit about, about the stat stuff that, that, you know, will will be a thing once this this happens. Um, uh, one sec. So the main things that Neelith will have access to once combined with Ruth is advanced telepathy, uh, which will mean that she will be able to perceive the content of any telepathic communication within sixty feet of her, and cannot be surprised by creatures with any form of telepathy. Uh, she's also going to have telepathic shroud, um, which will make her immune to any effect that would sense her emotions or read her thoughts, as well as any divination spells. Basically, off off the radar and d- taking in all of those, uh, you know, intercepting all of the psychic messages. In case anyone thought I was being overbearing with uh, the mind uh, shielding stuff, like that's just from the flump stat block and we've copied and pasted it into yours, so... Yeah, basically, I now have the two new things that you get for for Flump. Um, beyond that, uh, for level ten, Neelith's sheet has um some extra HP. Bardic Inspiration is a better dice level. Uh, she's got expertise in medicine, which I think made makes sense because she's going to have a little bit of therapist brain in her. 
Uh, she gets a new cantrip, which is Minor Illusion. Um, and then Magical Secrets means that she gets to pick two new spells from any class, which are going to be Counterspell and Banishment. Um, so that's what's on the table for Neelith once, you know, she's able to do all this stuff. But that's that's where she's going to be going. So you're at Ruth's place uh, in her Carmack. You're sitting. Oh, do you want to reverse? Do you want to be uh, in the therapist chair and she can be on the couch this time? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, and she says, now you ask, how does that make me feel? How, how does that make you feel? A little scared. <laughs> I mean, that's understandable. Um... It's a lot of unknown, I guess. Yes, I've done a little reading, and I feel like I have a good grasp on it, but it's not the same as actually being eaten, which I assume you can't really prepare for. No, it's not typically someone does something someone experiences more than once. Not not usually, anyway. <laughs> I... <laughs> It's like skydiving in the D&D world. It's like you go to get eaten on a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> but is there anything you want to do before we do this? Is the, is the, do, do we, do we want to get everyone together in town and just spend some time with everyone, maybe? Yes, I think we should have at least one public meeting so that everyone is on the same page and no one blames you. But personally, I try to think of things that I want to do before I go. A kind of, uh, basket list, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, I've, I've heard of basket lists before. Very, very popular. Well, what if, what if, what have you got on your list, if you don't mind me asking? And do you mind if I go come along with you for those? Of course. We have to do it together in a sort of... Buddy comedy situation. <laughs> I call Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's 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 first on the wacky hijinks list? Hmm. I've always wanted to do something very cool, like eat a dragon. <laughs> I don't know that we have any dragons in town. Um, hmm. I admit I start I swung hard at the start there, but you're the chef, so I thought if anyone had dragon. Uh, I mean, oh, so you don't want to eat a whole like a whole dragon that's alive. A, a bit of dragon would be okay. Of course, it's just to say that I did. Flumps are famously the most fragile species, and dragons are the strongest. Wouldn't it be funny? Think of the dramatic irony. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know if I can do dragon, but we can go over to the Wind and Dine player and I can find the most dangerous thing I have in stock, if that would help. We'll see how close we can get. I will put that in my basket, which is why they call it the basket list. <laughs> <laughs> see, if I was in a if I was in a point where I could do magic right now, I would offer to like polymorph and become a dragon and then maybe we could just chop a little bit of dragon off <laughs> and then you can have some dragon to eat that might be weird but like i'm, I'm gonna be eat, eating you so you eating me wouldn't be that weird probably couples that eat each other <laughs> nope nope there isn't a rest of that this nope. is like a plot point in the boys where someone's superpowers they grow back <laughs> so they feed themselves to people jesus christ <laughs> um what else I have always wanted to win a fight. <gasps> oh, oh. Well, right now, I'm not in the best of fighting position. So do you want to have a fight now? We'll, we'll go for it. Three rounds. I don't know that you are in the shape where I would feel particularly vindicated. I think it should be a little closer. You, you don't want, you don't want to just give me a body slam right now into the into the therapist couch. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would help me organize a exhibition. Maybe I could uh, dunk that nerd Aze or something. <gasps> I I can definitely I can definitely organize that. Hey hey, here's here's the secret for fighting for fighting Aze. 
you go, you, you wait until it's it's about time to do your punch, and you go, look up there, Arze, it's a cool star. And then when Arze's not looking, you, you do a cool punch. Right in the balls. Exactly. Look, take, take your advantages where you can get them. Play dirty if you need to. What else? I think I would like to leave a great work of art. Maybe I could collaborate with Cat. <gasps> Oh, we could definitely... I, I think Cat would, would really like that. Um, I've never done hard drugs, I assume. So. <laughs> right, we're just cutting back to the forest. Everyone, the Baku, Slime, Cat, and Mold are just wiped out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hear we have quite a lot of them in town, so long as like no one has used an entire, you know, vat's worth of them at once. We're probably fine. <laughs> What about you, Neelith? What is on your basket list? I'd really like to go home someday and stand up to the people who I didn't stand up to back in the day. I'd I'd like to go back a bit stronger than I used to be and be like, hey, I'm me, I'm great. Ah, yes, the classic, look how hot I got since high school. Oh god, yeah. They they are good. they gonna have nothing on the number of tentacles I'm gonna have soon, and that's you know, if that's not something to boast about, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> and the psionic might. Wow, they will be so jealous. I'd like to travel one day and maybe make food out of like a vehicle, have like a little traveling food <laughs> vehicle that just goes around. Oh, I thought you wanted to make food out of a vehicle, like eat like. Tire souffle and b- bumper cordon bleu. Oh, oh, don't worry. I, I, I made, um, I made station wagon casserole once. It was delicious, actually. You know, uh, you could really taste the oaky undertones. Of course, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes the kitchen's running low on ingredients, and you have to get very creative. You are so. Loved here, Neelith. You are going to make so many great dishes. I am so happy to be giving you all this time. I'm really honored that those adventures I, I'm going to have coming up will be ones that I can take a little bit of you along with. Ruth smiles, and I think she's about to say something very sweet. And there's a knock on the door, but it's a, you know, a flap of treated uh, you know animal skin. So it doesn't really knock so much as kind of flap. Um, and you hear Barry outside say, um, hello, it's me, your friendly neighborhood pastor. Hi, um, come, come in. We, it's probably good we say hi. Uh, yep, uh, Barry kind of ducks under the flap. Uh, he is dressed in his finest priest robe. Um, earlier, obviously, Nobi said he should check in, so... Uh, he looks around for a chair to turn around, but it's just a couch and a, <laughs> a, the one that you're sitting in, the big comfy one. So he looks he looks uncomfortable. Ne- Neelith like wiggles. <laughs> Neelith wiggles as as much as possible to one side and goes. I really I really don't take up much room. You can like, put me on a table or something if if, if you rather. Oh, I I just need to make a little adjustment here. Let me just turn this around, and then I can hold you. I can hold the cup in my hands. There there we go. Isn't this nice? <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> oh, wonderful. I just had a great meeting with the governor about uh, the service for the kitsune, which I'm going to be planning. I also want to get a big uh, village get-together uh, you know, planned and scheduled so we can have Ruth say goodbye to everyone and make sure everyone understands what's happening. Uh, really excited about this. It's going to be great. I I want to make sure that however we do this. I I want it to be clear that this is something we've, you know, decided to do together. Um, you know, I I want to make it a I want to make this something nice. I know that ceremonious is usually not a moment for celebration, but I kind of hope this can be. Yes, I under different circumstances this would be quite a crisis, but I think uh Neilith You've done a lot for this village, and a lot of people see you as a protector. And uh, I, I can't say no one is going to put up any kind of fuss, but uh, I, I don't foresee any difficulties 
with it. Do you have any concerns that uh, people in the village will make you feel unsafe after this? Uh, traditionally, I feel like there would be some qu sort of, you know, violent backlash to illithid biology, but everyone's here seems to understand. I, I hope they they do. Um, as I discovered not too recently, there's people in this town who, you know, maybe maybe aren't as over it as I thought, but you know, I'll 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 deal with them. Like the the best I can do is, you know, not be secretive about this and to be open about what's going on and hope that people can see this for the the positive thing that it is. And if they don't, that's their problem. I'm not going to stop making them, you know, nice meals in the kitchen just because. They see me as, you know, gross brain eater. If anything, it might be good for the kitchen business. I feel like tourists uh, will really like the story. Not to be indelicate, Ruth. Uh, <laughs> and Ruth is just like, no, that is true. If, if it weren't my body dying, I guess I would also be like, wow, sick publicity stunt. <laughs> I mean, it's probably going to be a couple of summers before I feel ready to, you know, to turn this moment, this tender moment between us into, you know, a marketing gimmick. We'll give it a couple of summers. Yes, no, that feels tasteful and correct. I don't know. I mean, you gotta, you gotta make the money. You gotta stack the racks. You know what I'm saying? Look, if if you're if you're sure that's what you want, I will go hog wild and you know, like you know, make it a whole thing. But I will want that in writing so that it, you know, if anyone says it's ta tact tactless, I can say no, 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 sign something. First. Yeah, yeah. I I want to leave a will that says, in my case of my death, please politicize it, uh, just so in case anyone says it's tasteless. It's like please, like please use my death for marketing. It's totally cool. I actually think it's my idea. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> it's, give me the credit at least. This wasn't written by whoever found my will. Yeah, at least credit me. Very says, I spoke to Hale a couple of days ago, and while I, I was very sure the Kitsune as Hale would have been very accepting, he was actually a delightful guy. I'm not sure about new Hale, old Hale, original Hale. <laughs> uh, I got, oof, man, plasma burns all across the buttocks, let me tell you. Um, there's another knock at the flap. <laughs> everyone loves knocking on this flap. Hello? <laughs> hey! Hey, everyone! Hey, Neilith! Hey, Ruth! Hey, Barry! <laughs> hey! Join the party! There's enough flap for everyone! <laughs> Nobi trots into the... through the flap, I guess. Uh-huh. And he says, um... Barry, you forgot something earlier! Oh! What was it? I'm always leaving my little statuettes. I have a little cat, a little owl, and a little snake. Which one was it this time? This time it was a snake scorpion. And Nobi's uh, white floof starts to darken um, through gray, darker gray to black. Oh shit. And until he's just a silhouette of a sheep. A silhouette of a big dark floof, and um, something unfolds from this ball of shadow. And uh, well, Neelith is familiar with it, very familiar with it, because they dealt with the quarry before when they were fighting Venter's quarry. And um, I think it looms over them uh, in the small space, and then one of its claws uh, grabs and crushes a Barry's head. Alright, make an attack. Nine. <laughs> oh no, nine misses. So uh, Barry uh, just reflexively uh, throws out his like little prayer book and a magical shield blocks the claw. But now there is lo nice. looming over the group this uh, long shadowy snake with lobster claws. Although, uh, I believe I can make two attacks, right? Yes, as a barbarian, you can. Uh, but it's becoming more solid by the minute, this this creature, this quarry. Uh, Neelith looks in panic because she is not in a position to help whatsoever right now. Mm-hmm. 
23. That does hit. <laughs> Roll that damage. Uh, so with the other claw, uh, yeah, I think that it, yeah, it, it grabs uh, Vary by his head. Yeah. You grab onto Vary's head with your giant claw that's coming out of your quarry. And obviously Vary says, what's the, what's the meaning of this? What's happening? Why is this happening? You're not going to catch me giving long speeches, Vary. I'm dealing with you, and then I'll explain. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ruth is going to attack you. Flumps do have stats, um, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. Uh, so, uh, 14. That hits. All right. Two damage as uh, <laughs> Ruth floats up off the couch and starts uh, hitting you with her tentacles. I think Nobi um, chuckles. Uh, ne- Neelith's going to look to Ruth and say, please, please keep yourself safe. I've got this, Neelith. I have an acidic spray and many tentacles. This sheep doesn't stand a chance. Um, yeah, Vary's going to cast Sacred Flame, which is just a deck save. Okay. 17. Uh, that does save, and so the, the uh, flame just kind of, uh, you know, comes down in a pillar out of the, you know, I would say the sky, but you're inside a little, uh, you know, a, bu- a little building. So just the top of the, the you know, building in here. Uh, but the quarry uh, presumably just folds over your body and blocks it with its armored body. It's like armored uh, snake body. Nice. Does Neelith get a ton in this, or she's, she's just a tadpole? Yeah, Neelith has no stats, but she can speak. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, Nobi? Um. What do you want? Uh, 22 and a 19. <laughs> yep, those both hit. 13 and 13 again. Um. As, uh. As. As Nobi picks very up with the one claw and with the other claw grabs his legs and pulls uh lethal or non-lethal because that is lethal well i didn't even get to finish (laughs) uh yeah paint me a picture of that uh (laughs) i think that uh i think Vary's head comes off of his shoulders because i think that's probably the weakest joint in the body uh, out of those, out of the ones that would be under tension there. Very, uh, as you're pulling on Very's extremities in opposite directions, he says, I forgive you my... Oh, fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <sighs> um, obviously, Ruth, seeing you tear Very in half, says, Oh my God! Uh, and uh, sprays you uh, with uh, a stench spray that flumps have. Make a dexterity saving throw. 20. Yep, it does not get on you. This is a foul-smelling liquid, uh, which would have uh, poisoned you uh, and also identified you because you'd be covered in a nasty, smelly liquid, but you dodge it, which I guess you can describe because it's your turn again. I think that the... Uh, I think that the the shadowy parts of the the quarry just like create this like mist barrier like the 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 shadows that are emanating off of it and off of nobi's dark wool uh make an impenetrable cloud that the spray can't get into all right the spray uh goes off the impenetrable cloud and onto the ground harmlessly um what do you do 27 23 uh those hit so for nine damage um, Nobi, one claw of the quarry smacks Ruth against the wall. Uh, nine is going to prompt the question, lethal or non-lethal? Jesus. Uh, I think lethal. <laughs> uh, Ruth says, please, not Neelith. And with the other claw... Also nine damage. What does Neelith have for? Is it just like a hit point? That is a question for Austin right now. Neelith has one AC and one HP. I think in the other claw, um, 
Nobi picks up Neelith mm-hmm. and brings her around to his face, but like down near the floor so that she's just beneath him. And he says, what do I want? <sighs> Neelith, there are three types of people in this world. Sheep. Wolves and sheepdogs. Some people prefer to believe that evil doesn't exist, and if it ever darkened their doorstep, they wouldn't know how to protect themselves. Those are sheep. Then you've got predators who use violence to prey on the weak, and they are the wolves. And then there are those blessed with the gift of aggression and an overpowering need to protect the flock. They are the rare breed who live to confront the wolf. They are the sheepdog. And this is how you're going to protect the village, huh? You're going to start it off by (laughs) killing the three of us in this room. Is that how you're going to protect this village? Let me tell you about the three of you. Ruth and Vary, sheep, dangerous sheep at that, trying to mess with things that they ought not, trying to control the flock. No, no, that can't be allowed. But you, Neelith, Really take the cake, because you're in the watch. You're in a role sheepdogs should be in, but you're trying to act like this can be done with speeches and hugs and kindness. It can't. Just the same way you betray your heritage by refusing to take a host by force. You're weakening the whole town by refusing to do this job the right way. Someone like you can never be a sheepdog, Neelith, because you aren't blessed with aggression. You only know how to feel sorry for yourself and make excuses for other people's mistakes. That's not how the strong behave, Neelith. Neith- This is how the strong behave- And he drops Neelith to the floor, and with one hoof, he- Stamps her out. One claw of the quarry, the one that was just holding Neelith, now like reaches into the dark fluff um, and pulls out a star map and drops it onto the floor as the quarry retreats into Nobi's whitening fluff and he walks out of the out of Ruth's house. Did you want me to edit in last words for Neelith, or do we want her to be abruptly cut off? I think the fact that I had last words and didn't get to get them out, I think, is how that needs to end. That's how a murder do, right? (laughs) That's how a murder do. You don't always get the uh, satisfaction of the, uh, the perfect last words.